Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me. Before we get started, please hit subscribe to follow all of my latest investing and personal finance content. And be sure to check the link on your screen for a special message from our sponsor, The Motley Fool, where you can find the 10 best stocks to buy now. So I'm joined by my friend Tyler today. And one re that has been giving me a lot of headaches lately is Digital Realty Trust. It's one of the first REITs I bought. Um, I've owned it, I want to say, since 2013. Um, and it hasn't been performing well lately after a streak of really a long a long string of outperformance over most of its history. Um, so I've seen a few red flags of why this might be underperforming the market, not just that some short sellers don't like it. Um, to be honest, I don't buy the short thesis that, um, you know, big tech companies are going to start doing data center uh, operations in-house. Um, but there are some red flags I'm seeing. The first one I'm seeing is management turnover. Um, pretty much the whole management team has turned over in the past three or four months. And some of their, board, you know, their longest serving uh, board members are leaving uh, this year as well. Their CEO left at the end of last year. Um, they have a new CFO. Um, Tyler, what do you make of the management turnover? And what's kind of your red flag you see? So, you know, management turnover, there's sometimes it's nothing. Sometimes it's something. And I, I haven't quite pinned whether this is nothing or something yet because you know some sometimes we have significant management turnover maybe they all kind of came together in the company 20 years ago and now the retirement I, I don't think that's the case here but you know i'm not gonna completely rule it out but i i want to the, the thing that's made me a little bit nervous over uh recently and actually is why i ended up selling the stock a couple months ago is uh, if we start looking at valuation, I know a lot of like we've been saying like oh, rising interest rates and like doing things to, you know, why why that should devalue it. But I do want to get a little specific with it. And to some of the short sellers, notably Jim Chanos, he's been talking about this a lot recently. So in 2023, the company wants to sell about two billion dollars worth of assets to pay for its development and growth pipeline. So you you have to sell two billion to invest two billion and that's going to make you grow that math is a little funky right to the assets that it wants to sell right now if they were to go to the market probably going to get cap rates somewhere in the eight to ten range not great right like these were acquisitions that were probably made at four percent cap rates five percent cap rates so we're looking at significant bar you know valuation compression for these sales to invest in things that they acquired at higher cap or at, at higher valuations, right? So you start kind of tying those all things together. It's got a very high debt rate, so much so that they probably are going to have to issue equity to kind of right size the balance sheet. And you total all of those things up, and it just doesn't look great. And for me, a company that needs to delever with seemingly overvalued assets, or at least on their books. It's, Kind of tends it lends itself to a, a not great outcome. Yeah, and raising equity capital has definitely become a lot less desirable, especially after the recent decline in the stock price. And you mentioned the debt; their their debt to EBITDA ratio is up from five point two in twenty twenty to about six point nine now. That's a pretty big jump. And um, and it really depends on how you want to calculate it, because like you know, for the, for example, I'm looking at it here on my screener with a company called Coifin and they've got their, you know, debt to EBITDA north of 7.4. So depending on how you calculate debt or EBITDA, that number can vary a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I mean, inflation's hurting these data center uh, REITs as well. Uh, it's worth mentioning. They, you know, data center, it's tough to overstate how much power expense they have. And inflation has really been causing their power costs to rise faster than the rent they're receiving. So that's another big um, you know, reason why you're not seeing a lot of FFO growth out of these data center reads. So the million dollar question, you said you sold yours. Should I sell mine? I mean, hey, I did. <laughs> and I, I think I kind of laid out the reason why people might not want to buy it or maybe reconsider their position. Um, 
could it be something to revisit at a much lower valuation? Absolutely. But at today's valuation, and like you said, with management turnover and all of these headaches, that typically when management leaves, that normally means the new management team has to like rip the Band-Aid off somewhere. And a lot of people aren't going to like it. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to click subscribe if you don't subscribe to my channel already. And as always, this video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. Be sure to visit www.fool.com slash Frankel to receive the 10, top 10 best stocks to buy now.